Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time we're going to look at another one of those snap together concepts HP made. This one is called the 5300B measuring system. As you can see, it's named from the display unit. So it's an eight digit readout unit. And the readout unit actually works like a frequency counter would do. So you can um, combine all of these. You can change each of these to other modules. And this way you can create whatever kind of product you want to have. Um, in this case, I got the 5310A battery pack. And I also got an IEEE. I'll show you that video tomorrow. And uh, here we go, the 5308A. That is a 75 megahertz. And I also got a 1.3 gigahertz timer. And again, I'll show you these two tomorrow's uh, video. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I feel I need to inspect it first because of the batteries and also because the other units I got uh, seems to have really, really serious problems. So the 5300 is from about 1977, so it's a little bit newer compared to the other one I showed yesterday. And all you have to do is just pull these and then it's going to fall apart, right? Oops. It all looks exactly like the, the previous model, but they are not interchangeable, by the way. Um, you need to use models or plug-in units from the same series. So the first two digits must be the same, of course. Then they should be interchangeable. You can also change the, the battery module or you can just leave it out. So you don't need to have this if you don't want to be battery operated. However, I kind of like this because then you got the nice uh, handles. So first of all, I want to take the battery module apart and remove the different cells. But first I wanted to show um, all the different modules uh, that was available in 1977 when the manual was released. I'm so sorry my manual is in a very very poor quality so I'll just very fast show you that they uh, they show the 5300 measuring system here and then the battery pack and I think that is the two things you you buy in the in the kind of the starter pack sort of way right and then you can look at the different um, measuring modules and they're called 5301 that's a 10 megahertz counter a 5302 a universal counter that goes to 50 megahertz then there's a 525 megahertz counter that's called 5303. And then there is a timer counter called 5304. And then there is a 110 megahertz counter called 5305A. And I actually got the B version of that one. And then it goes to 1300 megahertz, by the way. There's also a multimeter width counter, uh, obviously. And it's called 5306A. And uh, then we have a high resolution counter called 5307A. And a 75 megahertz timer counter. And that's the one we are talking about in this video. And that is called 5308A. And then we have the battery pack that we have here in the, this video called 5310A. 
there's also a digital to analog converter module. How the heck is that going to work? I have no idea. And that is called 5311B. And then there is the HBIB interface called 5312. And I will show you that one tomorrow. So now we're inside the battery unit. The 5310. And this one was supposed to be a 12 volt pack. And uh, oh, oh yes, of course it is. <laughs> Each of those are 2.4 volts. So you will have two, but it's really not visible, but you will have two cells in here. So there's probably a cardboard tube that's covering up that we got two cells here. But please remember to tell all your friends when they get access to stuff like this, just remove the cells. It will be perfectly fine. This is definitely a way to minimize any further damage. Oh, they are heavy, heavy. So they are four amp hours and HP specified this as 48 watt hours. So I did remove all the cells. And yes, I do see a little bit of leakage, but it appears like all of it is inside here. So nothing spilled. And I also inspected the boards here. I don't see any tiny little drops of bad acids and stuff. But I do want to tell you some funny things. I don't know if you can see how big this thing thing is here right and it's from 81 and this is of course nickel cadmium 2.4 volts and 4 amp hours so how many watts hours do you have in this one compared to its size and weight and then compared to the modern lithium cells and this is a samsung one so there's actually about the same or minimum more in this new one and there's a lot less <laughs> weight to that one. And the size is crazy. Yeah, but that is how it is. So a lot of stuff happened during all those years. So after a fast inspection round and the batteries are now removed, I feel I should be able to turn on, yes, 0 0.8 watts. So that will be the idle of the mains transformer. Remember, power is routed to the charging circuits. And that's, of course, not active. So I should be able to turn. Oh, we got light. Yes, all eight digits are on. We got some blinkity blink here. Level B, why is... Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Because I am in frequency A. So why is this one responding? Hmm. Let's try and input some. I did prepare a little signal here. Let's go one megahertz and enable. And then let's see what happens. Oh, that will be my gate time or something like that, right? But I don't see anything here. What is all this doing? I don't know. What do I need to do here? I think this is our lucky day. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that! So I figured this out. So my time is now in auto. I believe that is the what it's trying to tell me here. And then I am in frequency A is the input. So that means we have kilohertz, and then this is the dot for kilohertz. So this is still our one megahertz, and I got one hertz resolution right here. And that is really, really good. I just turned it on, wouldn't you say? So attenuator is times 10, and that means my level here must be, oh, let's show this, so the lamp is lit when there is a signal, see? 
So it needs to be super accurate right there. If I take the attenuator in times one, see there's a little bit of a problem with this switch. See, now it's connected. Oh, yo, yo. And then, and then the range is a little bit wider. I think definitely this is something I need to clean a little bit. See, now it's really wide because now it's definitely connected. So that is what I need to look at a more deep clean on the inputs, but it is definitely working. Let's try and go down seven hertz, not six hertz, like that. Oops. See? Ah, <laughs> yes. I think I'll let it run for a few hours and see if this changes. So let's look a little bit inside the display unit here, right? So we got a standard mains transformer and a rectifier main capacitor. And the voltage from this goes via the connector and down to the other modules and then back again. And this makes sure that you cannot turn this unit on without all the units uh, correctly assembled. And uh, then it goes via the on-off switch that is here. You just turn this. Then there's a switch mode converter. So the switch mode converter consists of, yeah, this is the main transformer T2, and then there's T1. That is a current transformer. It is a flyback converter. And uh, then we have all the uh, rectified diodes, filters, capacitors, and all that for all the different voltages. This uh, power supply makes plus 17, plus 5, plus 3.5, minus 5, minus 17, uh, both for this system, but also for the uh, counter plugins or for any other plugins you could prob uh, possibly use. Um, most likely some of these voltages are not in use in the combination that I have of uh, modules, obviously. If we look a little bit here on the, the display is a very simple display. We've got eight seven segments LED um, displays and they're just connected in parallel in a multiplexed system. So we've got all those transistors down here that enables each of the seven segments one by one and then all the commons they go to a um, BCD to seven segment driver and uh, the one two or three to eight uh, decoder is uh, one of these chips and this handling each of the uh, seven segments like that. We've got a few uh, custom chips here. This is IC1 and it is a counter. Uh, it's a very uh, complicated uh, counter actually and it's doing half of all the counting and stuff. And they even uh, did us a little favor. They showed us a block diagram of all the internal parts inside this counter chip. So now we can see all the, the details here. And then uh, there's actually other counters. I think uh, that will be those chips around here. And uh, they form together the eight uh, digits. IC2 is here. And that is the time base um, IC. And this is, of course, uh, handling uh, all the input frequencies and output frequencies and timing, uh, starting and stopping uh, all the different things that it can uh, do. And that is uh, yeah, also a custom chip by HP. And again, they gave us a very nice block diagram. So we are not completely lost over all its features. And uh, the, this, this is U9. The big one here is also written with HP and HP numbers and logos and all that. That is, of course, also a custom chip. The funny thing is this is the chip in socket. 
I mean, why didn't they put these two um, chips in socket? But anyway, this is the control block, uh, and this one handles, uh, uh, again, start, stop, uh, displaying, refreshing, uh, latching, uh, and uh, moving data from the, the counters to the display. And there's a, an oscillator that handles uh, display refresh uh, via this one, and then transferring data to the display. And again, uh, they gave us a very nice uh, block diagram, so we can see all the internal parts of that uh, custom IC. Uh, I actually would also call uh, this one a uh, custom IC because it's a programmed um, a chip that handles uh, all sorts of uh, different conversions from numbers to what is written uh, on the display. And you select different areas in this chip depending on if you are in frequency counter mode or in voltmeter, ohm meter modes and uh, and so on. So that is uh, doing some fancy things like that. And I think it's, it's very fascinating to look at uh, this uh, board. I mean, how how many features and how compact is this because of all those custom chips and software in that one and, and all that. Uh, I mean, if, if you, they didn't use custom chips, they, they wouldn't have space here to put those uh, features here. Otherwise, we should have many boards uh, standing up here. Uh, it's just impossible to make. So, yeah, that is definitely something I would like to show you guys uh, about how fascinating the design really is. So we should appreciate it. And it's a two-layer board, really uh, nicely made. Of course, there is, is a full ground plane around all the power supply stuff but uh, yeah that's all there is uh, to it there's even written here February uh, 1977 on uh, on this uh, board and there's another little funny sticker here called fix it so what is that <laughs> yeah okay this is the uh, 10 megahertz reference uh, oscillator and it's just a Standard crystal? No, I don't think it's a standard crystal. It's something that is a little bit more sexy than that. But it's just a little oscillator here with a, a trimmer inside and a uh, also a, a trimmer so you, where you can fine-tune it from outside when everything is adjusted. And this is what I want to play with when I'm done uh, with everything else. That will be the voltage adjustment for the... 5 volt uh, feedback point for the switch mode uh, converter, by the way. Let's look a little bit at the measurement unit here, the 5308A, the 75 megahertz timer counter module. And uh, there's actually a little thing I wanted to show you. Here it says caution use with 53 100 B only so the B is the important and if you look at the display unit here this is the B version it looks very very different from the A version I mean half of those chips here they are not even there in the A version so that means a lot of the features um, this unit here needs, they are now present in the B versions. Uh, so, so that is why, just to, to let you know. So there's definitely a big difference. Yeah, anyway, this is a two layer board. And you will notice, of course, because it is uh, only two layer, you'll have everything going horizontal on one layer and you'll see all the power supply tracks, they're a little bit wider. It, in fact, they're using quite uh, wide tracks here. And they're using all available space for track width. And that is a good uh, design idea in, in general, really. And uh, on the other side, and then you, of course, have all the vertical tracks. And uh, yeah, that makes it possible to do that. This. Um, Unit here is um, is using some custom chips as well. I believe that one up here, and we got some 
really fancy resistor networks. Uh, that's probably what it is, right? And uh, I'm not able to find a um, a full schematic or anything. I can, of course, find a user guide or how to measure this and that, but there's no schematic uh, on this uh, on this unit um, that I'm available or I can get access to. So I can see that uh, all the chips are from 1977. And I think I saw a 76 uh, from the uh, serial number. So it's so this is probably 1976, really. Yeah, okay. And it's using a lot of these 1820 parts. And uh, this is, I think, in a norm, uh, another type of naming for more or less the same uh, 74. Uh, TTL chips that we all know so well. This is just an older series, the 1820 series, and a lot of them got this naming system here. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's uh, another cool thing. Look at this uh, front PCB here. And then the switches for the two feature switches here. They got this little springy contact that goes around. You can even see here on the PCB that it's all done on the PCB, right? I don't want to focus here. See, here you go. And it's also on the other side, by the way. So you can imagine this is a very, very compact way to do all the connections and to avoid errors, mistakes, and stuff like that. So all you have to do is solder this. Probably it would have been better if there would have been uh, some sort of a connector. But this is hand soldered wires in this way. And then it goes down to a connector. So you can pull this apart quite easily. All the other things here, they're soldered in. But that will still give you plenty of space for service. So, uh, yeah, okay, you could loosen these and then bend it out and then change a switch or something, right? That will be the front amplifier. We got some uh, two in one uh, transistor pairs. So, that's definitely uh, how they're doing the high speed and then they're doing some triggering. You got, of course, uh, you need to, you have the variable trigger point um, set up here. And that goes, of course, to uh, some trigger components here. And then you have your really nice uh, high-low digital signals you can uh, count on. The rest here is probably just uh, some pre-scalers and some signal um, enabling this and uh, enabling that. And when um, some of the signals are high, and low, then you will count the A or the B and, and, and so on. And this is more or less all this one can do. It's 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 not doing a lot uh, more, but you have, of course, a period B. So that means you can count really, really slow things on channel B by using the, the clock oscillator and then in period mode instead of frequency mode. And then you can, of course, Take the ratio A, B, period, average, and all sorts of things. All this is uh, covered quite well in the in the manual. And uh, you're just supposed to go and get that one if you want uh, any more details. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was uh, flipping out a little bit on that as well, by the way. If, if you see these uh, cards here from 70s, 80s, I mean... To try and have a little look. How many decoupling capacitors do you see? And I mean, this this runs on up to seventy five megahertz. So here's one, and then there's a big one, right? And then only here there'll be a little bit of decoupling capacitors here, but all those is, there's quite far, and it's only a two layer board. So I mean, the return path. On AC signals, that must be quite long when it comes to that, because 
Yeah, that's that's just how it is made. To today, you have at least one really, really close to each IC, and you have unbroken ground planes. You have unbroken power planes, and ooh, it's all so fancy, fancy here. But here, the rise time is not like a few nanoseconds. No, no, no. It's nice and slow. And it's in a super good condition due to the gold. <sighs> I was just testing this thing. And then I was ramping up the frequencies. <laughs> and I was testing with short gate times. Um, I got it up to 100 megahertz and 100, 110. It just did just barely. And then it suddenly stopped. And now I dial down the frequency, and now it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> that sucks. So how the heck is that possible? I, I, I just cannot get it to count anything. I've tried everything here. Oh, no. So can you really overload a frequency counter? I mean, really? But anyway, that concludes the video. And thank you very much for watching.